Tesla shares down today after the EV maker revealed in a filing that Chief Financial Officer Zachary Kirkhorn has stepped down from the company as of August 4th. Kirkhorn served as CFO for the past four years and has been with the company for 13 years. For more on what this means for Tesla moving forward, we want to welcome in Colin Rush, Oppenheimer Senior Analyst. Uh, Colin, thank you for being here today. Uh, at first blush, sometimes when you learn about a CFO suddenly departing, that could be bad news. Not seeing it really take a hit on t Tesla stock today. What's the significance of this? You know, for uh, from, from our perspective, there's there's a couple of things going on here. One, working at Tesla is an intense experience by uh, by all reports, and so uh, I'm sure there is uh, some element of burnout that uh, Mr. Er, you know the the departing CFO had here, having been there for 13 years. Also, you know, promoting the chief accounting officer, um, you know, keeps the the cultural integrity intact of of the financial organization and someone that's been involved here uh, with the the company for four years, and so this feels like. Um, a potential natural evolution of the the financial organization for a company that continues to see a certain amount of turnover just as as folks work through their positions and then decide that it's time to move on after a certain period. And Colin, I want to ask you though, one of the questions that's come up is just what this does to succession planning for uh, Tesla. Uh, do you think that this causes a a serious concern for the company? I don't, I don't think so. I mean, the the company has not had an issue attracting talent. It's been one of the more successful uh, companies here in the in the past decade, uh, if not the most successful from a from a stock appreciation perspective. And so there there has not been an issue on bringing new folks into the organization and bringing very talented folks, particularly on the engineering side. Within the financial organization, um, it's a little uh, less transparent in terms of who's doing what uh, and who are the key players. But you know, by all intents and purposes, the the company's done a very admirable job of developing a, an efficient, lean financial organization that's really served the, the mission of the organization. And if you could just bring us up to speed from your perspective of how Tesla is, excuse me, monetizing its IP. That is, it has this big moat. It's been collecting data on its customers for a decade, maybe longer. Um, other competitors don't have that advantage, at least uh, in terms of length of time. And then it's going about this in various ways. We have the dojo investment, we have full service driving. How much is this paying off and what's the timeline to really make this pay off in terms of revenues for yeah. the company? I mean, it's an interesting question in terms of where their IP is. You know, we really start with the you know basic material science on the battery level and and how that uh, understanding of, of material science uh, you know goes through the entire powertrain into the vehicles uh, and then how to make vehicles and then how you navigate those vehicles on the road. That's that's one whole segment of uh, of IP. You know, on on top of that, they've developed actually a, a quite nice uh, stationary energy storage business where they're monetizing IP there. And now as we move deeper into the AI uh, space, we'll see how um, they actually monetize this. So far, the, the full self-driving has been um, you know, a little bit limited in terms of the, the ROI for them. They've invested an awful lot of money over a number of years, and they still have, um, you know, some, you know, they have some revenue to show for it, but there's an awful long way to go for the organization. But the, the key areas for us have been in terms of building this user base on the vehicles uh, with the optionality around some of these other products that they're building around the vehicles and then moving into um, both the utility space and the, the home energy space with, uh, with the stationary storage platform and a little bit of solar. And Colin, I want to ask you, uh, we also saw news about Elon Musk possibly having to have surgery. He, uh, I don't even know if we call this a tweet no. now, tweeted this, I suppose, for lack of a better word. I don't, I don't know if there's new lingo for the X platform. Um, is that a concern when you think about both this news with regard to the CFO and then uh, just potential health issues for Elon Musk? Does that you know, register as a concern yeah, I mean, for you? It, it, yeah, I mean, there's principal risk for this organization with with Elon, right? If he ends up having to step away or step down, you know, I think there's certainly a lot of investors that um, really see him as the visionary that's pulled this this whole organization together and continues to lead it. I, I have a hard time believing that he would step away even for for illness uh, for a very long period of time. It seems that he's been devoted to uh, to building these companies and and really leading Tesla. And and so as is that situation uh, evolves with his personal health. 
health, you know, we'll we'll have to reevaluate. But I, I have to imagine that he'll continue to be involved as much as he can. And there's also been, I think, a, a more robust um, infrastructure built out uh, for the company in terms of uh, senior management and a couple of layers of senior management. Um, we certainly saw that on display at the analyst day uh, in March in Texas. And and so I think, you know, they're mitigating that in a variety of ways as the organization grows. But it's hard for me to believe that Elon would step away for very long if uh, unless really forced to. And Tesla has been a leader in uh, taking the reins in price cuts. They've been first uh, to market on a number of uh, different models and kind of led the way, paved the way for other automakers. Um, is that round of price cuts, do you think, over now? Or is that something that we're going to see maybe ramp up later in the year? You know, we've seen actually fairly strong sell through on on uh, uh, on vehicles through you know through the the first part of the year, and, and part of that has been modulation on pricing. You know, as as we get into the back half of the year, and we look at where interest rates um, hopefully uh, flatten out here uh, in, in the in the short term, we'll see how vehicle sell through uh, continues on. You know, for Tesla, you know, they had been capturing a fairly substantial premium, and you know, as they've ramped up uh, a, a fair amount of uh, volume on the production side they've you know been taking share from a lot of folks and sometimes you have to uh, incentivize the market to um, to adopt the products in, in a different way uh, when you're you're taking share of that aggressively and so I, my sense is that we're, we're getting close to the end of those price cuts short term there's going to be an awful lot of activity around uh, share gains and and shifting in terms of um, which vehicle makers really do ultimately succeed what we continue to see though from Tesla is that they've innovated on the technology and the cost side ahead of peer and continue to drive market share just by having structural cost advantages in terms of the vehicles and on the manufacturing front. And so they have the option to. I'm not sure we're going to see it here in the back half of the year, but they certainly have the option to drive share with those price cuts if needed. And Colin, I, I know in your uh, last research uh, that you all put out in late July, that you put out in late July, one of the things that you were questioning was just uh, Tesla's uh, timeline for monetization of AI. What are you looking for from Tesla with regard to that now? I mean, the first application on the AI is the full self-driving, and, and so they've been able to roll out a certain amount of functionality. What we really want to see is the the actual use of the, the investments that they're making in terms of compute power into other areas, uh, and, and it still seems premature to, to speculate on where that actually ends up, uh, but the, the first one is on the, the full self-driving functionality, and they've done a, a reasonable job with that, but, you know, certainly are... are substantially later than they had anticipated in terms of being able to bring out um, you know, fully autonomous vehicles. And so that's the, the first one that we'd look at, and then we'd be looking for an incremental um, monetization you know, from the, the JoJo investment down the line. But it's, it's hard to tell just, just yet where it's going to come from. And we got time for one more. I want to ask about the rollout of a uh, uh, buildup, I should say, of the infrastructure behind uh, charging stations, uh, finally partnering with some of the other automakers, but really having been a leader in this, can Tesla maintain their edge? And who do you see winning the infrastructure war here with respect to these charging stations? You know, so the, the infrastructure investment that Tesla made really was about enabling uh, vehicle sales, and and they've spent in, you know billions of dollars in building that that infrastructure out. Um, you know, the, there's a couple of things that, that we think about with this. Is one that's um, sunk cost on the marketing uh, uh, on the marketing front for Tesla, and this has been a, a way for them to help drive some standardization in the industry, which we think leads to cost reduction. But it's also a way to recoup some of that investment by providing the you know access to to other OEM um, you know, customers. But at the same time, it becomes a, a real branding exercise for Tesla in terms of being able to um, you know, attract all of those vehicle users uh, to their to their stations. When we look at the, the infrastructure opportunity, it's still you know, very nascent. Um, we look at ChargePoint, ticker CHPT, as a real leader in that space from you know, both a hardware and a, a full operating and service perspective. They, they really are the leader in terms of the backend software and the management of a, of a full network um, uh, you know in the in the infrastructure space in the public charging space and so you know besides Tesla and, and all the the benefits that they accrue by having uh, all of those impressions on consumers we really see chargepoint as, as the big winner here in the the charging infrastructure space all right we have to leave it there really appreciate your insights Colin Rush Oppenheimer senior analyst